Hi, I'm Panky Tanker, and this video is going to be a review for my Army Armaments R85A1. Now, this Army R85A1 is said to be a direct clone of the GNG L85A1. The Army R85 comes with a large format instruction manual. It's a photo manual with photographs of the actual Army R85 with directions and instructions on how the external uh, parts operate such as uh, magazine release here or fitting the forward iron sights here. It's all contained in the manual. For those of you who watched my teaser video about the R85. This is in fact Rifle A. It is the Army R85 and the other um, rifle that was in the video was in fact the G&G L85 and that was Rifle B. So Rifle B cost over £300 and Rifle A, which is this one in my hand, cost about £115 in the UK um, from Airsoft World and it uh, comes with a full 12 months warranty. So the Army R85A1 is all metal. Um, the upper and lower receivers are all metal. Um, the carry handle and iron sights at the rear are metal. Metal sights at the front. Um, metal body to the plastic molded handguard. Um, Metal outer barrel, trigger guards metal, and it weighs about seven and a half pounds, which is exactly the same weight as the GNG L85. So starting at this end, you have your uh, rubber butt. It's corrugated. It's a rubbery texture, soft rubber texture. Um, it's almost identical to the G&G &G one. You have your sling attachment points which is ambidextrous on both sides. It can be pushed through to run your sling through. Moving on to this side you come to your bolt release. This is a lever um, and on the G&G &G, you would pull your charging handle back and push this down to lock the charging handle in place. Um, on this army it does it automatically, you just pull the charging handle back and it locks in place. So the actual bolt release is used to release the charging handle forward again just by giving the slight pressure upwards. Something you may notice though is when pulling the charging handle back this dust cover, it's a little piece of green plastic actually falls down as well. So if you watch that closely and then you can lock it in place and again the bolt release push it up and it comes forward. Um, now the only problem I've had with any of this in this area is this little dust cover and that was as I pulled this charging handle back the dust cover would not release it would just jam into the handle. And if you look at this, it's not a problem at all now, it releases and it locks down. Show that again. Uh, and all that is, is this metal bracket here, holding the dust cover in place, does so via a little plastic tab. And the little plastic tab just need trimming down with a scalpel. So I've got a scalpel blade, trim the tab down and it now falls out nicely. Here's the metal bracket that holds the dust cover in place via this tab. If I push this out, you can see the little tab here. Um, this angled piece here was just a little bit too long, so I had to trim it down. I took no more than uh, a couple of millimetres off it, and that would that freeze it up enough that when you pull this part of the bolt back, this well, it automatically pushes this out. What was happening is this was being stuck up here like this. 
because it wasn't being pushed out in time. But as you can see there, with the dust cover in place, charging hand and pull back, it drops down very nicely. Um, two second job. While well, we're up here looking at the charging handle, cycle it back and lock it in place. You can see behind here is the hop up. Now I haven't set the hop up yet. I'm going to wait until I take the um, Army R85 down to the skirmish site so I can get some distance on it and adjust the hop up as necessary. But the hop up mechanism looks exactly the same as that on the G&G L85.